This one here is my buddy, 43. You don't mind a little human contact, do you, bud? Hey guys welcome back to the channel hey auction king strikes again and in this video we're going to show you that we're going to show you tillage equipment tour on our farm so before i go into that i want to say thanks for all the birthday wishes some of you guys hit me high some of you hit me low 39 years old i appreciate it them 50 year old ones though i mean come on man i ain't that old i'm looking that old first of all dad calls me up online auction this is a soil finisher 6432 sunflower we've never had one of these this is like a one pass tool the grounds right and he says we're thinking about bidding on this seven o'clock at night so i log in online right on my phone and it's going for a decent amount this is a hunk of iron sitting here look at these all hardened welded okay heat treated this thing is is, is when i seen the name on it i knew it was, a, it was a person i connected with online on instagram and i knew they were good farmers up there in the thumb of michigan i think it's here on county not quite sure so dad says all right we're gonna put this in for a bid bid out bid this much on it and you know it's sight on scene you got to take their word for it he called the guy on it uh i kind of know his daughter i guess but it's got the oil lines in the rear uh you're just this is probably this thing's 20 years old you're not going to find a piece of iron like this that has been as well maintained i mean it's it's this is probably the nicest one that's that's out there because i've started looking online i mean this thing is just put together so this is our new piece we're going to use this maybe on some of this corn ground here this corn ground's already been dissed one pass tool so it's going to take we'll use a john deere 9400 probably to pull this and then we're going to hit the field and hopefully be ready to plant tillage equipment tour we're going to start out with this kong's kill 6000 series eight bottom plow you've seen it in action auction fine they put this big drum on top, okay, to keep it from kinking, because you start wrapping a 400 horsepower tractor on there, she might start bending, but that's the plow. This is the old plow, John Deere 3710. All right, this is more of a tongue pull. Ended up ripping some mow boards right off it, so we got it parked here, looking for some mow boards to get on there, ripped them right off. You can see the torque that that thing will give. So if anybody knows where one of them are, these plows aren't worth a ton of money, so for you to buy that, you're, you're more than likely going to buy a whole other plow to just take that thing off and replace it. Moving on to our disc, this is a John Deere 32 foot 1 inch, just come out of Canada, just 45 minutes to the east there. This thing came in pieces, big old disc, bad boy, look at that, look at the blades on this thing, it's huge. This is our main disc, what we use for chopping corn stalks and getting ground ready. We usually put a cola packer behind there or a rolling harrow. I'll show you one over there in a second, but we like this because of all the cow manure we have on the farm here. Uh, you need it. And uh, I got a decent deal on this. Worked with a dealer over there, Han Farms, and made a deal. And they, they, they brought it over in pieces and we had to put it back together. But it wasn't a bad deal because, you, you know, you, you learn how to put this and how this thing works and all the bearings when it was apart were rebuilt. John Deere 980 field cultivator. We bought this from a dealer up in Marlette, Tri-County. The reason we bought it is we knew the guy that bought it knew. Okay, he, he bought it, then he didn't use it much. He went straight no-till. So he had this thing sitting in the barn. You know how, how these get wore out is when there's like some play here. Look, at that thing's not even moving. He's got my shirt here. Hey, it's not even moving. These are knock-on shovels. We'll knock them off and replace them. We use this. And you got to hook to the sunflower rolling harrow or rolling baskets rather but this was our main deal here we usually like to field cultivate and then uh, depending on the ground we'll use a packer behind it if the ground's really right we'll use these baskets if she's a little lumpy we'll hook a cola packer up to it and then it'll help bust them up but this is another good piece this was i think it's the 36 foot we've had it for quite a while and now we're moving more to discs and uh we're thinking about possibly no-till, but we'd have to have the planter set up for it. Here's an older, smaller, brilliant chisel plow. We've used this. I've used it. Uh, we don't use it much anymore, 
but it's nice to have if you have a small field and you need to get around somewhere or if you have a fence row that you cleaned out you took up and that's what you do you chisel plow it and uh to bring up the roots and stuff and the rocks well you use something like this that's kind of why we keep it around and you can see it ain't been hooked up to very recently but it's something that you need you just don't use very often okay guys so so changing locations here here this is an old corn cultivator we don't really use it anymore we're gonna probably put it up on auction but you know what this is for once that corn gets up to a certain height this thing rides over them and they cultivate between them it's a good for an organic farmer maybe moving on john deere 714 chisel plow with the disc in the front we've used this and then sometimes when we're not chisel plowing we'll just use our disc but yeah we've had this for probably 10 years auction by again but a heavy duty old girl and yeah uh, it works well that's why there's no comparison to that last little chisel plow i showed you that brilliant this is the real deal and uh, we only use that once in a while this is an old disc here we're going to put this up on auction probably next week next few weeks for next month and this is going to go down the road uh, this is an older one that that we've replaced and we just don't use anymore here's that other disc that we use the big disc this was the brilliant i think we bought it last year two years ago i showed you on the video kraus heavy duty top of the line i mean we like the john deere disc but kraus they're known cracking kraus that's what they're known for it's got the rear hitch in the back oil lines displays all good size not the same size as the john deere but not small if you look at the nine it's a 4990 this is an older disc but if you look at the frame and everything in here, it's such great shape, you know. So down the road, we'll probably use this another year or two, then upgrade. I'd like to get another one of them big John Deere. So we like those, those 32 footers. We'll see what happens, but there's the other one. You put a paint job on this thing, it looks like brand new. Which locations again, back up with the main farmer. I want to show you one of them cola packers that I've been telling you about. Got this parked in behind our self-propelled chopper here. Had a guy real quick, he asked me, what, what's up with your tires? He noticed all the way from over the silos. He says, you got them on backwards. Yeah, we turned them inside out. We wanted to dish them in. That way, when you do that, it doesn't run on them corn stalks. Otherwise, it'll, we had a chopper that them corn stalks are so tough, they'll eat away at that tire. And when you, when you, when you turn them around like this, it, uh, it, it runs between the row. There's a little tip. Here we got a Kuhn Kraus Cola Packer. This thing's like brand new. Auction find, uh, Southern Michigan or something, 4,400. This is probably a 34 footer. Uh, my other one is a Brilliant. Bought that new back in the day and it stayed like new because we keep it indoors like this. But this is, this we needed this because we were running two rigs one year, which we will again, but we couldn't keep up and when, when you're farming and so it's in the spring and you only got that tight window we wanted to have both rigs running i think it was mark and greg running a rig to stay ahead of dad 16 row corn planter he wanted to stay ahead of him so he dad was playing all day he'd come home go to bed wake up next morning he'd go all day again so these guys were like running at night pulling double duty working here and i was just staying here milking and i think i had cody or there might have been another guy milking so that that was just the way it is you're you're we all milk, but when the going gets tough, I do strictly the milking while they can do the field work. But when it comes to filling these big bad boys, you guys know, and you're going to know again this spring, they cover, Mark covers the milking, or I should rather, Mark's chopping and the rest of the deal. Greg covers the cows, and these are my babies. I'm the one filling them, I'm the one climbing them, I'm the one doing them. So we all have our own little special thing we do, but when it comes to filling and chopping, that's my game. Let's go in here and run these guys out some feed. I want to show you some cows and heifers that I just brought up and calved. And here's one right here. 173 he gave her. She looks like she's just starting to use the stalls. Look at the little bag on her. Pretty calm heifer. When I brought her up, she had a bad foot. She was kind of limping around, but the hoof trimmer was just here. You seen that? And he, he hooked it up. She had something stuck in there and he trimmed her. So that's, that's one of the newest heifers just calves. And uh, she's very tame. She's fitting in here very well. That one right there in the middle just brought her up this morning. She's not a tag. She hasn't calved yet. She's still kind of rowdy. We're still trying to get her to settle down. It takes a day or two to get into a new environment. People are like that too. It takes you a minute to, to get acclimated. Big bull getting ready to breed, trying to do some handiwork. There he is. Look at him. Still, you remember him when I brought him in? He was just a little guy. Look at him. He's getting tall. You know, we'll be ending up turning him out next. He gets so big, 
I gotta go. Remember that 46 I gave them IVs to? I showed her to you last video milking. Here she is sucking up some sun. Old girl. Look at her. Isn't that a beauty? Saved her. And now she's just hanging out getting ready for milking. I'm looking for a white heifer I brought up. She's all white. I want to show her to you. She hasn't calved yet. She's going to calve very soon. I just don't know where she's hiding at. This one here is my buddy, 43. You don't mind a little human contact, do you, bud? That's her, number 75. You wanted an update on her. 14, 12 calves or something like that. Doing fine. She already had a heat. She's not wanting to talk to us today. She's not in the mood. She wants to get up by that feed, but already had a heat. Markings on her back. She may go another round yet. That's the uh one of our prize cows. It's funny I can't find this white heifer, but she does. She likes to mind her own business. She's real quiet and uh passive like that. Alright, found her. She's over there. Let's go over there. Yeah, her and Rochelle got something in common. There she is. She's getting up. They're about to pop. Rochelle's any day. And uh, this one looks like she's any day. I see some discharge hanging from her. You see how you see how she's crapping and it's falling out of the stall? That's why they're designed like that. And this is her. Where are you going, bud? All white. There she is, Ross. I'm going to get out of here. I've done stirred them up enough. But look at, she's going to have a heck of a nice bag on her. And she is. When I brought her up, I can always tell how they're how they're going to be because if they run in there nice, you can always tell them jumpy ones. But sometimes the tamer ones, they're tougher to break into a parlor because they're stubborn. Alrighty guys, hey, that's gonna do it for the video. Thanks for stopping by. I've been kind of all over the place. I uh, went to, to the baby meeting with Rochelle the other night, then we went out to dinner. Um, she's dilated to one. It's gonna be, they said, it's scheduled up for next week. Next week we're having a baby no matter what. Um, and, but it could happen before that, he said. So for, that's like our main focus right now. You know, I'm, that's, that's, that's it. That's the big deal going on. So the grant man's coming. We don't know when she's really nervous rochelle is this is her first child you know i didn't let you guys know about that but i will in the future more but this is her first child she's nervous she's kind of scared so it's my third so we're gonna we're gonna get through it and we're gonna see what happens first boy grant michael and we'll see uh how he turns out so thanks for stopping by uh hit that like thumbs up button and uh subscribe to the channel get on farm focus get you a sweatshirt or a ball cap and thanks for the support Thanks for all the stuff you've been sending, all the letters, appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of getting stuff together so I can show you and maybe give you guys some shout outs. But in the meantime, take care and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks.